As you can see, I've kind of jumped the gun here and I went ahead and painted the saddle and the blanket on the horse and also the band-aid. Uh, I figured if you watch me paint the horse, you can certainly paint that saddle and that blanket and the other little odds and ends there. So the horse is finished now as far as paint-wise go, goes. So uh, I also did my sign up here. Uh, I went back to the old standard that I've used over the years. Gentle horses for gentle people, spirited horses for the spirited. And for those who don't like to ride, we've got horses that don't like to be rode. People seem to like that. They bought plenty of these things over the years, so I just thought I'd stick with it. I went and I stuck me on some little signs here. One says, we give free lessons and sorry, no credit. And here, watch your head. I just stuck that on there because it's kind of a low gate there, you can see. Anyway, I got that on there. Let me take this fellow off of here. I uh, epoxied my gate into the base. So uh, it's solid as a rock now. Like I mentioned before, I nailed this uh, down in these three spots here, underneath the hoofs of the horse. As you can see, I also made a little adjustment on moving my horse back a little closer to the gate than I originally had it. Uh, so there's a couple extra holes there, but they won't show. That's all right. Once that horse is put down, he's never coming up again. So the base is pretty well done. We've got one more little thing to do with it after everything goes together. So I'm going to set this aside. I went ahead and I put my dowels, three dowels, in the bottom of the horse's hooves just by drilling a hole there, being careful not to come up through the top of the hoof naturally, and inserting a dowel and gluing those in place. So that's done. Uh, I've made a little bit here. This, these come out because I haven't put them in permanently yet and I'll show you how to make yours here in just a second. So the thing that we're going to do right now is, you can see all this stuff up here? <laughs> Looks like a lot of stuff's going on here and a lot of stuff is going on. I mean uh, the, the carving's finished and everything but right now we're putting everything together. This is the extreme nitty-gritty here. This is where everything happens to make this the finished product that you set on your display table and wait for that collector to come by to take this thing home which I have no doubt they're going to. So anyway the first thing I've got to do is I've got to make his bridle and bit and reins and do a little decoration on the saddle. So to do that, lay this sucker down here. Here my Judy giving me instructions there. Years ago, I went out to a Goodwill store and I bought a woman's coat, old long woman's coat, leather coat. And it was made out of this extremely thin leather, which is perfect for making little leather attachments on the horses. So all I do is I just get me a straight edge, long straight edge here, longer the better. And I lay it on there. Well, you can see I've already cut some, but I'll go ahead and cut another one just to show you. What I want is I want about a, uh, maybe a quarter inch strip. I'm going to get this up there because I don't like wasting this leather. I'll probably never find another coat like this. So anyway, lay that up there on a piece of wood, and then just take uh, a utility knife and scribe down across there like that. And you'll get you a nice thin piece of leather. Of course, you got to go down to the thrift shop and buy yourself a woman's coat. I don't even know if they make those coats anymore. So there I've got me some leather here. That's all I need to make my uh, uh, reins and my bridle. And those little things, these 
will go on this saddle. And I'll show you that here in just a moment. But I want to get rid of this thing. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah. Okay, I'm going to start by making the bit. Now uh, the bit on this horse is very simple. All it is is a little bent piece of wire with a loop on the end of it. And I use, uh, this is uh, 18 gauge wire. I'm just taking a pair of needle nose pliers, this is how I make them. Just grab the end of it here and just kind of form it around there and bend you a circle. About like that. Then I take the nippers and I cut off that flat end where it's not curved because I don't want that. Just like that. Then I'll go ahead and bend this around to like to it's like that. And then just grab it right by that junction there and bend it up like that. Then come in here and grab it a little bit. Like that. And just bend her over. Like that. And then just give yourself about oh, an inch or three quarters of an inch or so, half an inch. I've pre-drilled my holes at the junction of the uh, back of the mouth right there. And these will slip right in there like that. Just like that. Okay? But don't glue them yet. Don't glue them yet. Get them out of there. Oh, now I varnished the horse too. He's all varnished. I put epoxy some epoxy on his eyes so it's nice and shiny. Uh, he looks pretty good, I think. So now I'm going to find me a piece of this leather. That one's a little wide. I'm going to use this one here. I've got me a tack here. What I want to do is just punch a hole through there, just like pre-drilling. I want to Punch me a hole through there. Pull this up on the on the thing, just like that, and then stick that in the hole right there, like that. Okay. Now remember the bridle path up here we I explained earlier. So we're going to put that right through the bridle path. <laughs> bridle path. Kind of stretch it tight, not real tight. You don't want to stretch the leather. Let's say pull it tight, don't stretch it tight. And then poke your hole right there where that hole is, just like that. And then insert that in there, just like that. Okay? Now, you can cut that off right beneath. Thing. There, now we've got the first part of his stirrup on there. Now what we want to do now is we want to pull this out again, like that. Get your super glue and use this thin stuff. You want the thin stuff. And put a little bitty drop right in there. Let it soak in, like that. And then put another one in there, just like that. And then quickly get that back in place and kind of get your bridle to where it's comes just about straight back from the horse's mouth, just like that. Don't put super glue on leather because what it does is it makes it just hard and brittle. You want your leather to stay flexible. That's why I took the thing out. Okay, now this one here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull that out. Put one drop. that soak in. Put another drop. Don't 
glue your fingers together. I've done that a couple times. And put that back in there and that, move it up to where it matches the one on the other side. Just like that. Okay, so we got that one in place. Let's give that a moment to dry. Now, on these things, I cut these little things for the back on the saddle. These are going to go right back here. So I just cut them straight across on one end and slant it on the other. And I'm going to just uh, knock off the corners. This will be the part that goes up by the saddle so I don't have a square corner there. About that far down from the top, I'm going to just slice down through there, right down to the end, like that. Okay? And give it a twist. A few twists, like that. And we're going to put a hole in the top of it, right there. Oops, wrong one. Get you some excursion pins. And before I do put these in, what I like to do is I like to take these uh, decorative nails. They're called pins, but they're sort of nails. And with an emery block that you can find down at the hardware store, I sand off the top of the nail to get rid of that old shiny brass finish. Okay, so it's dull like that. And then I put it on here. Just pull up on the leather and it'll go right up on that nail. Just like that. And then we nail it into place. I've already pre-drilled my holes. Slicer down the middle. Like that. Give it a couple twists. Get on there, you mother. There she goes. We got the sand off the top. Make sure you get the edges too. Same thing on the other side, okay? I won't do that now. So this is probably dry. Yep, these are set up. So now what I want to do, where's my leather here? Is about right there. I'm going to hold that in there. I'm going to take my push pin here and right where these two meet, I'm going to Sink me a hole there. I'll come back here. And with the smaller pins, and I'm not going to sand these because I want these.
to kind of be shiny up there. Find my hole right there. Just like that. I'm going to drag this across the top of his hair to the other side. Hold it right there. Take my push pin. Let's make sure we get these. Actually, I'm going to move it down just a little about right there. Don't stretch it, but hold it tight. Make a hole. Take another pin. Stick her in there. Like that. And take your utility knife and just cut that off right there. So there, now we've made his uh, bridle. Now to make the reins, I forgot something, so I gotta go get that before I go any farther. Okay, got what I forgot. This is rubber cement. Now I'm gonna put the reins onto the bridle or onto his bit right now, okay? And when you glue leather together, the only thing that works is rubber cement. At least that's the only thing I found that works. Now you can use rubber cement, you could use contact cement, but rubber cement, you can find a little tube of this down at the hobby shop or probably even at the hardware shop. I use quite a bit of it, so I've got me a great big container here. So I got me a toothpick here, and this stuff has a pretty strong vapors, so be careful when you... We're not going to use very much of it, as you'll see here. So I'm going to thread this through here like that. Just like that right there. I'm going to open up this rubber cement and get me some on the end of a toothpick. Don't take much. This is kind of set up over time. There, that's plenty. I'm going to put some right here on the very end, like that. Get little thick fingers here. While it's wet, I'm going to move it over to the other side, like that, and then squeeze it together. Just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to pull it apart. Like that. Now you see I've got rubber, <laughs> I've got rubber cement here and rubber cement up there. Now what I'm going to do is just let that set for a minute and dry. And that way, when I put them back together, they'll stick and they'll never come apart again. Okay? So we'll just wait here for just a second. It's probably good enough. Now we'll put them back together. But notice, uh, I don't have any rubber cement right there in the middle. That's because I want these reins to be able to move freely on this bit. So I'll put those right back together again. And just squeeze them together. There they go, they're dry. Now I've got one bit on there. Right. One rain on the bit, rather. Looks pretty good. Alright, I'll bring it up here. Try to get long enough. Let's make it about that long. I got some rubber cement there and I didn't cut that off up here. Right there. Then I'm going to turn her over and do the opposite side. Make sure you put your short short end on the inside. Some more glue. 
Doesn't take much of this stuff. It's in a dark jar there so it won't dry out so quickly. Again, I'll just spread that on one end. Did I show you how to make a bit piece? I, I did, didn't I? All right. So there, now we got that print. Now let's get them both the same length. This rain. Okay. Now, I like to take gun blowing and on those nails that I sand it off, you can find this down at Walmart too. I think you can find everything at Walmart over at the guns, gun section. And uh, where I sanded those off, I'm just going to paint this on there. And what that'll do is darken those. See how it darkens them? That way they don't look so shiny. There, see, now it looks a lot better. Okay. These little nails, I think I found these at uh, Michael's. I went to Hobby Lobby, they didn't have the right size that I was looking for. These are uh, 18 gauge, about half inch. These, these are larger. I can't remember where I bought these. You can buy these on the internet. These are a little bit bigger. These are about, oh, I'd say 16 gauge. And they have a bigger head. I keep all different sizes. Now those nails that I nailed down the top with, they're uh, 7 eighths inch long brads. Okay. Set this stuff aside as I use it up and then I can remember what I've told you about. So there's our horse. So now let's bring our base back in here. Get rid of this stuff. Don't throw this away. Hang on to that stuff. Because you never know. I'm not going to glue him down yet. I'm just going to set him in there. So now what we can do with these reins. One more thing. I'm going to take this over and with a toothpick I'm going to put a couple black dots and then a silver dot on top of the black dots to indicate rivets that hold the reins onto the bit. And I'm going to put a couple black dots right here and then a couple silver dots on top of those to indicate the rivets that would hold the leather together on his head stall. All right, that just make it look good here. And what we can do is we can take these reins now over to the gate. I won't do it, but I mean you can do this and just tie them onto that gate with a you know just an overhand knot to look 
to give her the uh, illusion, the uh, effect of the horse being tied to the gate, waiting for the rider to come back out and hop on. All right. So that's our horse. He's finished, except for one final thing, and I'm going to do that right now. Let's turn it around here. Take the horse back off. Lay him down. Get out my Mod Podge. This is crushed turf. You can find this down at the hobby shop. I think you might be able to find it in Hobby Lobby too. But I know at a model train store is generally the best place to look for it. It's, it's foam and it's just crushed and they use it for uh, grass and to indicate small foliage on model railroad layouts. I'm going to use conifer green. Uh, this is yellow grass and this is light green. And what I do is I take take a little mixing cup here. Put that down there. Pour in a little bit of Mod Podge. About like that. One of the big lump that just went in there. Don't really bother it. Take you a pinch of that. Get you a pinch of that. Get you a pinch of that. Like that. And then just stir that up where that's good and coated. This will dry clear, so don't worry about that being white. Okay. Bring this around. And with your toothpick, just kind of get you a little. And we're going to hide the junction of where these poles come down to the ground. Just like that. little extra things I do uh, go a little too far well that's all right you don't have to do them if you don't want to but that's what makes makes your carving is the little extra things you do to separate your stuff from everybody else's stuff will dry hard like I say and it won't come off of there and just this little bit is all you need to make it look that much more realistic Get these little mixing cups down at McDonald's or Arby's or when I go in there to get me a Big Mac I generally cob on to a couple extras. Maybe that's not ethical but I do it. So there. Now that'll dry clear like I said and uh, totally hides where that hits the ground and looks pretty spiffy. So now let's put our horse back on here. And then we just tie other things back on there and oh, oh I forgot one thing. 
This is matte medium, the same as this here. It says matte medium, but it's Mod Podge. Mod Podge and matte medium are the same thing. I've mixed it with water to cut it down to where it's pretty fluid. And uh, I put a couple drops of soap in it back when this was full. And what I do is just take this and put a little drop there like that. Too much. Just soak that up there. And that'll just that little drop will be drawn all the way around that pole because it's got soap in it. The surface tension of the water is broken down to where it really soaks in good. And uh, that'll just adhere this stuff down just that much more. Okay? all done now. I've got to go and tie this together and then I'm going to put it up on my photo stand take a picture of it because uh, I think it turned out really well and then I'm going to sit down and think about a price for it and then the next show I go to I'm going to set it up there on my display table along with its price and someone's going to come by the first day and buy it. I have no doubt about it. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, segment on doing a horse and uh, we'll be back later with the new series doing something else. So until then I'll say I'll see you later.